Gaming Vault presents 15 video game NPCs you screwed over for no reason. NPCs have the worst job in all of gaming. Their very existence revolves around you, the player. They move, they go about their routines, they give out quests, they live out their lives, but ultimately, everything they're doing, they're doing it for the player. Talk about an identity crisis, huh? What's even worse is that players don't seem to care about that, because as respected and crucial as the player is to an NPC and its very existence, almost every single player treats them with just as much disdain. They are our punching bags, victims of horrible atrocities committed by us without fear of judgment or consequences. And so, oftentimes, we really screw over NPCs in the most spectacular ways possible, never even given a thought as to how their artificial, coded, and limited brains might feel about what's being done to them. Here in this feature, we're going to take a look at 15 such instances, some of which are scripted, while some happen during the course of gameplay. There are a few spoilers ahead, a few of them major, others not so much, while there are also none at all in some cases. In any case, if you see us beginning to talk about a game you do not want spoiled, go away. Orcs Middle-Earth Shadow of War Shadow of War is centered around one concept, the domination of orcs. Whether it's through disintegration of their forces by killing their captains, or by recruiting them to make them fight for you instead, that's the central theme of the game. One other way to do that is by using a mechanic called shaming, which essentially allows your character to break an orc mentally to lower its level. If you do it enough, though, it can have truly horrifying consequences. An orc can go from vowing vengeance against you for shaming it, to eventually begging you to stop the constant torture just by killing it once and for all, to ultimately literally losing its mind completely and not being able to speak. No one deserves this, not even the orakai. Every Pokemon Trainer Pokemon Pokemon games have always been pretty kid-friendly, with their silly dialogue and their accessible nature and the all-around friendly atmosphere of the games, but dig a little deeper and you find all the mainline Pokemon games hiding some deeper, darker truths. Take the trainers you meet and battle along your journey, for instance. Not only do you completely batter all of the Pokemon they have with them, to within an inch of death, you then leave them in the middle of nowhere, miles away from a Pokemon Center, and you even take half of their money. Well, that's just barbaric. Wayne Haas, Deus Ex Human Revolution Oh man, Wayne Haas gets so royally screwed over by Adam Jensen, it's not even funny. Or it's so tragic, it almost is funny. No wait, I would say it's definitely funny. Jensen and Haas used to be high-ranking SWAT officers together at one time. During one fateful mission, though, Jensen, who was in command, was ordered to shoot down an augmented kid, and when Jensen refused to do so, Haas was forced to do in his stead. Not only did this turn him into a guilt-ridden mess, it also cost him his high-ranking SWAT job, with him being little more than a desk sergeant in the local police when he meets Jensen once again a few years later. Good old Jensen, though, isn't done messing with Haas's life. Shamelessly, he asks Haas for a favor, and a huge one at that, asking him to let him sneak into the morgue and steal something for a case. Eventually, when the higher-ups found out that Haas for some reason helped Jensen with this, he gets fired, yet again. Consequent to this, Human Revolution gives players two options. Either try and make amends by offering Haas a high-paying private security job over at Seraph Industries, or punch him in the face. Well, in for a penny. Mother Base Soldiers Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain why are we here? The soldiers living out their lives on Diamond Dog's mother base often ask themselves. Just to suffer? As if it weren't already enough that they regularly get infected by diseases, forcing their leader to wipe out a large number of them as an act of mercy killing, and also for preventing further contamination, Venom Snake, who they believe to be Big Boss, also keeps going around the base and randomly punching and kicking and tackling people into the ground. The poor souls have been conditioned so terribly that they actually think he's doing them a favor and helping them get stronger, and they end up thanking him for the physical torture. What's worse, the man doesn't even take a bath for weeks at a stretch, and the stink he leaves behind is unbearable. Batarians Mass Effect 2 The Arrival DLC Commander Shepard's a hero, right? He's done so much for the galaxy, he beat the Reapers, helped resolve bloody and long-standing conflicts between warring alien races, literally saved tens of billions of lives. Ask anyone in the Milky Way galaxy, and they'll tell you, Commander Shepard's a legend. Well, almost everybody. Because as far as the Batarians are concerned, Shepard's nothing short of a genocidal maniac. 
At the end of Mass Effect 2's Arrival DLC, Shepard is faced with a choice. Destroy an entire system's worth of Batarian population, close to 300,000, to delay the Reaper's arrival, or refuse to do so and risk an immediate war with the Reapers. Sure, his decision had no malicious intent towards the Batarians, and all he wanted to do was stop the Reapers, but all he really did was delay the inevitable. The Reapers came anyway, and they wiped out a huge number of the Milky Way's population regardless, and those poor 300,000 Batarians basically died for nothing. Sushi Delivery Guy – Hitman Absolution At a certain point in Hitman Absolution, Agent 47 finds himself in an elevator in the company of a guy who is delivering an order of sushi. He's had a tough day, he's got the address wrong, and he's making his way to what he thinks is the right address. Frustrated at his own incompetence, he rants about said frustrations to an impassive, uncaring Agent 47, wondering if he's dyslexic in his own words, or maybe he's just not all that bright. As it turns out, his mother, who he seemingly doesn't have a very good relationship with, seems to think it's the latter. But Agent 47 does not care. He knows that as soon as the elevator stops and its doors open, a group of armed soldiers are going to be waiting right outside in an ambush that is meant for him. He can tell the sushi delivery guy about this, that his life is in danger, but Agent 47 is a man of little words, even if that means letting another man die. And sure enough, a split second before the doors open, Agent 47 makes his escape into the elevator shaft up above, while the delivery guy is riddled with bullets, bringing his frustrated existence to a close as he tragically drops the sushi. R.I.P. Sushi Guy with Mother Issues, R.I.P. Floyd, Grand Theft Auto V Here's the understatement of the century. GTA V's Trevor Phillips is a vile, repulsive, atrocious excuse for a human being. I mean, sure, he's a wildly entertaining character, and within the insane, lawless universe of Grand Theft Auto, he's actually the perfect model of what a person should be like. But really, he's not. Quite the opposite. Trevor does a lot of pretty gnarly, disgusting stuff, but what he does to Floyd, his friend Wayne's cousin, takes the cake for sure. Not only does he break into the man's house, in essence, and force Floyd to take him on as a house guest, he also completely destroys his life. He starts off by destroying physical property only. He destroys Floyd's furniture, breaks a little bit of this and that. Eventually, though, he ends up killing both Floyd and his fiance, and then uses the defiled teddy bear as a hood ornament for his car. The hell, Trevor? Civilians, LA Noir. Just imagine this. Your regular old Joe living in post-World War II Los Angeles, going about your business in your shiny new car that you've just bought for yourself. It's a vehicle that can go up to as much as 65 miles per hour. Holy shit, right? Mankind was not meant to travel at such insane speeds. You giddily think to yourself as the crisp, cool wind blows against your face through the slightly cracked open window while you drive down a wide open boulevard. But then, a policeman steps out onto the road some distance in front of you out of nowhere, waving his shiny badge in front of his face. You slam your feet on the brakes as your eye catches the sharp reflection of sunlight being caught on the copper's badge, the glint being magnified through your brilliant, shiny new windshield. The cop tells you that he needs to borrow your vehicle. It's urgent. He needs your vehicle to chase down a vicious arsonist who's been slipping through the cracks of the legal system for years. Being a good, upstanding citizen, you reluctantly but willingly give up your vehicle, believing that the cop will return it to you as soon as he's done, with it in good condition. The cop gets in, floors the accelerator, gets as far as about 100 meters, and crashes the car into a wall in the most random, ridiculous way possible, absolutely totaling your pristine new vehicle. Within 30 seconds, the policeman has found a new civilian to borrow. To him, the last two minutes meant nothing, but to you, you will always know that your tax money is being wasted on policemen that steal automobiles for fun and wreck them irreparably for sport. All of Arcadia Bay, Life is Strange. Life is Strange is a wonderful, heart-wrenching story about love and friendship. It's got some neat little shenanigans, from freak storms and ghostly deers to murder mysteries and time travel, but really, at its core, it's a game about two girls and their amazing friendship, a relationship it builds incredibly well over the course of its five episodes. Which is why when the game makes you choose between the life of Chloe, Max's best friend, and all of Arcadia Bay, a town of thousands, it's somehow actually a tough choice. It shouldn't be, right? It's one life versus thousands, even if it's the life of your best friend. And well, chances are, if you're not a freaking selfish psycho, you chose to sacrifice Chloe's life, like I did. If you didn't though, does it matter that you managed to save your friend? When everyone else you've known over the last few months, basically an entire town died because of you. Was it worth it? 
No, it wasn't. You can cry all you want, you have to live with your horrible decision. You can't turn back time now. That's what got you into this mess. Conrad Werner, Mass Effect. Conrad Werner was just a man on the Citadel who was completely taken by Commander Shepard and his massive achievements. After Shepard comes back from his mission on Eden Prime, where he first encounters the Prothean Beacon on the Citadel, Werner asks Shepard for an autograph. The player can either choose to be a boring goody-goody and sign something for the man, or can choose to be a douche and tell him to stuff it. But it doesn't end there. Later on, after Shepard becomes the first ever human Spectre agent, he meets Werner again, who wants a photograph with the infamous Commander Shepard this time. You can either choose to give in to the poor guy's pleas, or you can tell him to piss off yet again. But then, later on in the game, there's a third interaction between the two of you, where Werner tells you that he too wants to become a Spectre. You can either convince him that he's not fit for the role by either using charm or intimidation, or you can tell him to leave you alone and go away. If you go with the second option, later you find out that via a newscast that in an effort to prove himself, Werner faced down a bunch of Torians and he got himself killed. So yeah, just sign the poor guy's autograph. The Colossi, Shadow of the Colossus. In Shadow of the Colossus, you play as the human personification of a three day old bag of trash. The mysterious, desolate, hauntingly beautiful land you explore is populated by very little life, but the colossi you run into are absolutely awesome to behold. Majestic, hulking, enormous beasts that silently go about their business, paying you no mind whatsoever. You decide to attack them and brutally murder them because reasons, and ultimately it turns out that you've been tricked by an evil entity into doing so, because these majestic beasts were the only thing that were keeping the entity from coming back into the world. Now these peaceful beasts are dead because of you while Sauron's dad runs around wreaking havoc. Great job. Kudos. Ship Captain, God of War 1, 2, and 3. So, Kratos is a dick, right? That's not a controversial opinion. Everyone knows it, everyone accepts it. No one could challenge him for that throne. But you know who perpetuated the wildly popular and accurate opinion that Kratos was a dick? The Ship Captain. In the first God of War, Kratos lets him die by falling into the jaws of a dead Hydra. Just, you know, cuz. In God of War 2, he literally kills his soul. He encounters the ghost of Sparta yet again in God of War 3, and things don't go any better for him on the third go-around. Nadine Ross, Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. Brothers Nathan and Samuel Drake can make things difficult for whatever adversary crosses their paths, but perhaps not a single person in their entire lives has been as sick of their entire existence as Nadine Ross. Every punch she lands on the two of them feels like a release of pent-up rage. Every word she speaks to them drips with suppressed frustration. And when she leaves Nate to die in the smoldering ruins of a half-sunken ship at the end of Uncharted 4, you can almost sense her giddy relief that she probably won't ever have to see the man again. And you know what? It's almost kind of understandable. Not only does Nate and Sam act like a wisecracking jackass around her for more than half of the time, which to be fair is just who he is, he also perfectly encapsulates, from Nadine's perspective at least, the meaning of the phrase pain in the ass. Because of Nate and Sam, Nadine not only never receives the treasure she has been looking for, she is also betrayed by her own employees, her private military company is stolen from right under her nose, and she nearly dies on a number of occasions. Sure, Sam and Nadine kind of patch things up, at least a teeny bit, in The Lost Legacy, but will she ever really get over her exasperation over the Drake brothers? I doubt it. Blanche, Mortal Kombat X. Of all of the characters we've mentioned on this list, Mortal Kombat X's Blanche, who is found in the Outworld Market stage, really, really gets the shaft. She's just a frail old lady who is slowly making her way across the backdrop with tiny, weak steps, hoping to get some shopping done at the marketplace for the day. Of course, she had no idea that two superpowered nut jobs would be trading brutal, grisly blows at the market that day, and even if she had, she never would have guessed that such an incident would affect her, of all people, in any way. But sure enough, at any time during the fight, either of the two players can choose to use the poor old lady for an environmental move by, well, literally picking her up and throwing her at the opponent. The Doctors, The Last of Us. Even if your life has completely gone to shit, even if you're completely down in the dumps, even if you have no other avenues left and find yourself simply incapable of finding a source of livelihood or making some money, and then the Fireflies ask you to join their ranks as a doctor, even then, do not accept their offer. 
because things might be going well for you initially. You might be thinking you finally have a stable job, that you're doing something that might actually make some sort of a difference in the world. And other than the fact that almost all of the world's population has completely been wiped out in the last 20 years and is now crawling with vicious, terrifying zombies, your life is actually going pretty well. But then comes the day when you're conducting a potentially world-changing procedure on a girl, but this crazed armed maniac bursts in, shoots you and your fellow doctors and anyone else he sees in the head, picks up the girl, and then leaves. Rest of the world be damned. So really, if you could go back to the moment when you were offered this job by the Fireflies, you should instead tell them, thanks, but no thanks, and gladly run into the loving arms of the first clicker you see. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.